Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Rylan Russell here. Today I want to talk to you about three loathes that I have and three loves that I have for ProPresenter 7. So before we jump into the loathes and loves, let me tell you about our setup really quickly. We have a few different displays. We have a Decklink Duo that's sending four different feeds, an alpha, a key, a full display program feed, and also a hallway sign feed. Then we're using one of the USB-C ports out of the actual iMac to send a stage display to our rear projection screen. Those are all 1080p 2997. This iMac should be able to handle everything. It's got 40 gigabytes of RAM. It's a 2019 uh, 3.6 gigahertz, eight core model. Uh, we're still running Big Sur, but everybody tells me that this machine should be able to do all the things we're throwing at it, but we have had some hiccups. So that brings me to load number one, and that is the ship it and fix it mentality that I have experienced. If you're a Pro 7 user, you've probably spent many a day on the chat and sending crash reports and in the ProPresenter users group, trying to figure out some just simple thing that seems to be crashing your, uh, your, your workstation. And it's just maddening. And I was not an early adopter of Pro 7. I was trying to wait till they had all the bugs worked out because Pro 6 was flawless for years and years and years for me. And maybe it's just that I'm asking too much of this machine or of Pro 7, but you know, it's what they advertise it can do. So I'm trying to utilize the great features. But yeah, that just has been the number one thing that has annoyed me the most and that I've loathed is how it feels like it's a ship it and fix it mentality. For instance, and we're on 7.5.1, just yesterday I went in to adjust our lower thirds of our lyrics. And whenever I right click and edit this slide, let's see if it does it here. It was crashing it every time yesterday. Yeah, there we go. And just like that, it's crashed. All I'm trying to do is right click and edit a slide. And for some reason, it won't work. That's the kind of thing that I've experienced. <laughs> and maybe you have too. All right, as that loads back up, which it takes a minute for all the databases to kind of repopulate, uh, I'll tell you about one of the loves that I have. The built-in alpha and key SDI output that just comes with Pro 7. We are utilizing all of those things for our lower thirds being sent to our ATEM. And I absolutely love that. You know, I used to, they would charge the extras to kind of add those modules or whatever. And I like that it's all just built into Pro 7 now. Cause I mean, it is kind of pricey. So that's an awesome bonus. All right, it looks like we're up and going again. And I'll just show you really quickly how we have some of these set up uh, on our sermons. You can see in our, oh my gosh, come on. Well, eventually it'll load back and we can click on things. I don't know. I'm trying to make this video about Pro 7 and it's not cooperating. Uh, come on, buddy. You can do it. I don't know what your problem is. Maybe I can show you on one of these songs. Oh, look, now it decided to start working. Uh, for instance, on that title slide, you can see here that we have our student pastor's name tag come up with an alpha video. And then we have a different stage display here that is sending a clock to the back and then we can always have our hallway feeds going as well. Now that brings me to loathe number two and that is a feature set which is awesome but then having to add hardware to actually take advantage of that feature set. And what I specifically mean is this hallway feed it sounds like a great thing but what we experienced is that they don't have a way built into the software to use the clear all command without clearing your hallway feed. And so I literally had to take off our F1 key. I mean, our operators had been doing this for 11 years. They're so used to hitting F1 to clear all. And if you click clear all right here, our hallway feed goes away. And so what I had to do was go out and buy a little stream deck here that literally companion does the work that ProPresenter should be able to do natively where you click this clear screen and it clears the screens in the room and doesn't clear the hallway feed. So that's loathe number two. Which brings me to love number two, and that is the custom stage display layouts. I really love having this custom four up or however you wanna design it, stage display. And so, you know, we can have all of our screens right here. 
And we still have our hardware screens over here, just in case something happens to our software-based one, but it's really handy. And so that's love number two. All right, loath number three, and I could go on, but we're gonna stop with this one, is just the layout and experience of using the program. I cannot stand how you cannot rearrange windows. You've got this area over here that they've tried to make a little better use of, but before it was just audio. And I would love to be able to drag these things more and like move things around. We've got the library and then our playlists. And one of the things that drives me the most crazy is how the experience of importing a song onto a playlist now takes about four clicks longer than it used to. For instance, we have a lot of versions of This Is Amazing Grace. I hate this search thing, it's so dumb. Sometimes it doesn't even find it. This is Amazing Grace. Okay, now you see that there's a bunch of versions there. Used to you could click on that, preview the version before you import it to the playlist. Now you literally have to double click to bring up that thing, then I don't know of a way to just click on it and import it into the playlist. You know, you can't drag it over. Then you have to open your search back up. Then you can right click it and add it, or you, well, I don't know, you can do it there. I guess you have to be in the library. You can drag it over and add it. Oh, and looky there, it took me off of the Master 1045 for some reason. I know I sound like I'm whining, but it just is like weird stuff that's happening. Um, and so just that experience is so much worse than Pro 6 was, in my opinion. Uh, I know they really love the search thing for some reason. It takes five minutes before you can even find it. One trick I have found is that if you're in your default library, if you use this filter, it seems to find things better, in my experience at least. And the editing experience used to be horrible on a Retina Mac. I could drag ProPresenter over onto this little side screen, which is a VGA output. It'd be snappy, snappy, snappy. But if I have it on my actual iMac screen uh, two versions ago and for many, many months, you would type and about 15 seconds later it would start typing. And luckily that has been fixed. So props to you guys, ProPresenter, Renewed Vision people. And uh, I know I may sound like I'm complaining a lot. I think there's many of you out there though that can probably relate. And I will say this is the absolute best program for our worship ministry. It's an essential tool and we utilize it so much. But there's always things that can be better. It drives me a little crazy when somebody will say they're having issues and then another person will come along, ProPresenter 7 works great for us, I don't know what's wrong with y'all, like it's user error or something. And so to end this video, I do wanna add a final love to the list. And that is the ability to click one slide and have it do so many things. It can trigger MIDI lights over here on our uh, Jans Vista. It can send, you know, the audience looks to different places you know, and it just is really, really powerful when it works. This will just be kind of like an honorable mention. I really wish that they would pack a little more into the timeline feature. I think if we could have separate, you know, lanes in that timeline, non-linear things where it's like, you know, a MIDI lane or, you know, a video lane, that kind of thing, it'd be so awesome. Right now, everything has to be packed on to the slides. And so it kind of makes it tough to time things correctly. I know you can use Ableton and that kind of stuff, but you know, for us, this is how we're doing it. And you know, that's just a feature request I have. And I will give a love for a honorable mention as well. And that is the audio tools that they've built into all of the new ProPresenter stuff, which has been so great because many times we're doing lyric videos and different things that might have varying levels of click tracks or loops. And now we can go in here and mute or adjust independent left and right channels and do some different things with that. And don't get me wrong, I love Pro 7. We use it all the time. I think some of the feature set that they're trying to push as far as the streaming and Resi and all those things don't really suit our workflow, but I understand that's not everybody. But I would love to be able to right click on a slide and hit edit and it not crash randomly. So uh, if you're a Pro 7 user and you can kind of relate to some of these things, hit that like button. Thanks for watching guys. Enjoy. Remember we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for the right reasons. We'll see you in the next one.